The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jared Smithson. I am a certified Optavia coach uh, here in Chile, uh, Utah. Just got back from uh, five days in Los Angeles, hopped on the plane, 85 degrees, hopped off the plane, 25 degrees. So um, I've been in uh, sweats and sweatshirt all day long. So um, tonight we've got a great topic for you. I'm super excited to share with you. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, training your brain. Um, how in, as we're talking, uh, go ahead and put your thoughts in the chat um, and uh, responses to the questions we're asking stuff, and uh, we'll try to interact as much as possible. But how many of you have ever um, felt like you're fighting with yourself, arguing with yourself inside your, inside your mind? Um, I have uh, <laughs> all the time. Glad that I'm not the only one. Uh, this is because we have uh, two different parts of our brain, main parts of our brain. There's lots of different parts. But we're going to talk about the two main parts, our limbic system and our prefrontal or neocortex. Um, but to, to start off, I want to share a really interesting um, study that I recently read about. It was a linguistic study. Um, and they, they were talking to about uh, the average adults. And we, uh, average adults speak between about 150 and 200 words per minute. And in this study, they uh, hooked up all the brain stuff. Uh, I don't know how all that works, but I'm glad that there's really smart people out there who do. But they, uh, they looked at uh, the amount of, of uh, um, electronic or electric uh, stimulation, the brain stuff, and they uh, perceived that the average adult speaks uh, approximately 1,300 words per minute in self-talk. The conversations we're having with ourselves in our brain. Just uh, reading that, um, and I don't, I don't know if it, I don't know how they came up with that accuracy or anything like that, but um, uh, not in full presentation mode. Let me uh, try this. How's that, everybody? I know that some people are having problems uh, seeing. Great. Okay. Some people might have problems uh, seeing it, might not fit in the screen and stuff, but uh, glad that you're, people are seeing it. So 1,300 words per minute, we talk to ourselves inside of our heads, and 150 to 200 that we dialogue with other people. So just the sheer volume of what we speak to ourselves um, can be overwhelming sometimes. So we're going to talk tonight about how to kind of slow that down and how to have more manageable, uh, good conversations that will help us uh, reach our goals um, and consistently um, st stick with those goals long term. So uh, just to share my story, um, it's, uh, it's been about eight and a half years since I was actually heavier than the picture on the left. Um, I weighed 228 pounds at my heaviest. I'm six foot two. Uh, I, help, I carried that weight everywhere throughout my body. It wasn't just in my belly. So people didn't really ever say, whoa, Jared, you're fat, or you need to get a little bit healthier. But um, my wife lost 35 pounds. Um, on her own before we found Optavia. Um, and she kept that weight off for about four years before I got on board. Um, and most of it, most of uh, my issue in those four years was just a lot of excuses. I wasn't taking personal responsibility for my life. And uh, so I was using excuses as my reasons, right? Um, and 
And don't ever let your reasons for being healthy become your excuses. Um, my reasons for wanting to be healthy or being interested in being healthy were I wanted to have more energy for my kids. And uh, I wanted to have more energy and, and be uh, return to my old physical shape where I was uh, more athletic and things like that, right? Uh, however, when things would come up, I'd be like, oh, well, I can't. I can't eat right because I'm fixing this stuff for my kids and uh, I end up just picking at their food or I don't have enough time to go to the gym or move my body just through my uh, regular daily activities, things like that. So I was using my reasons as my excuses. So I had to become aware of that. And, uh, and so I managed to lose about 25 pounds on my own. It was miserable. Most of it, I didn't, I didn't know uh, the Octavia program at the time, and uh, it took me about 15 months to lose that uh, 25 pounds, followed by a nine-month plateau. Any clients out there, um, a plateau on our program, we talk about like three weeks. I was on a plateau for nine months, and I was, I was going insane because I was doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Well, my mother-in-law... Um, was an Octavia coach. And she uh, loved me and she reached out to me and said, Jared, uh, can I show you a, a better way? And I took a hold of that uh, olive leaf, <laughs> uh, olive branch, so to speak, and I uh, lost my last 25 pounds a lot faster and I felt a ton better. I actually felt like I was 20 years younger. I'm in my mid 40s now and uh, I feel better than I did actually when I was playing high school and college basketball. So um, we've these two parts of our brains, we've got uh, going back to what I mentioned uh, to start, we have this limbic center, which is really the uh, where our animal instincts, our emotions, um, it's a flight or flight, flight or fight center, the amygdala. Um, it's it's there for good reason. It's our survival center. Um, if we didn't have this part of our brain, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't go after food. We wouldn't uh, seek safety. We wouldn't seek to uh, procreate anything like that. And humankind would um, would be extinct, right? We'd be like the dinosaurs um, because they only had a, a limbic system, but they also couldn't reason and and well. I might uh, get get some kickback from some paleontologists, so I should probably just talk there. We're talking about uh, what I don't know about dinosaurs, right? So, um, without it, humankind would cease. Now, the limbic is what Sigmund Freud referred to the as the it. It, like it's just part of us. Um, it seeks pleasure. It seeks a life of ease. How many of you, uh, uh, when you have uh, multiple choices in front of you, how often do we say, hey, I'm going to take the harder route? Or how, how often do we say, hey, you know what, I just want it to be easier. I, I know for a fact that I've been guilty of, of looking to the easier way. Um, in uh, Alice in Wonderland, what is the Cheshire cat, she comes to that and says, like, where do I go? And he's like, well, where do you want to go? And she's like, well, I don't know. He's like, well, if you don't know where you want to go, then any road will do, right? So do you know your road? Do you know where you want to be with your health? Do you want to know what you want your life to look like? If you do, then reach out to your Optavia coach and tell them exactly what it is that you want your life to look like. And then let's go to work together to uh, be, be on that path together. And, uh, and sometimes we're gonna have to endure a little bit of pain um, uh, and we might have to go through some struggles, which is where the growth comes from. So the limbic also says, hey, I wanna avoid pain, avoid change. Um, there's no morals, it's very impulsive. Um, it will say anything or do anything to protect itself. A tiger doesn't feel guilty for hunting and killing its prey, right? It sits and slaps it around and plays with it. Um, it's just part of how a tiger uh, or a lion is, right? So 
Uh, prefrontal cortex is where we, we set goals. We have long-term plans. We visualize. We envision what our life, what our health is going to look like. This is where we're very mindful. Um, power to move and do. We can, uh, we live in a, in a world that is so full of stimulus. Uh, what, one of my favorite, uh, I think one of the most powerful statements in the history of the world uh, is from Viktor Frankl, who is a survivor of Auschwitz. Um, horrible conditions, right? Anybody who knows anything about um, that period of time and, and what those people went through. Uh, but he said that between stimulus and response, there's a space, okay? In the world we live in today, there's so much stimulus that very rarely do we give ourselves a chance for that space. We're just very reactive. That's very limbic. Uh, our fight or flight is constantly battling, oh, what do I do? And it's so quick to react. So if we give ourselves some space, uh, Frankel says, between that stimulus and response, there's space. In that space lies our power to choose our response, and in our response lies our growth and our freedom. So what we're trying to do is help ourselves in that space. First of all, to be aware so we can create that space and choose a very responsive life rather than a reactive life. Um, be mindful about what those goals are, which road you want to take, because we want to get to the right place. Um, free will or free won't. I have the power to say, yes, I want that, because it will, uh, self-discipline is kind of the, the mastery of doing things that will help us achieve our goals. Self-control on the other end of the spectrum is kind of resisting things that are not going to help us achieve our goals. So being aware of those things. And everything goes through the logic brain. Even though the limbic says, hey, run, flee, fight, whatever it is, um, it still has to be processed through the prefrontal cortex um, before a final decision is made. Okay, so our two-part brain. Uh, why we feel crazy sometimes. We get in a rut and our brain creates these uh, patterns, these habits, right? Just like our behavioral habits, they were formed first in our brain. And so your brain will consistently do the same things over and over uh, and stay in that rut unless we become mindful and jump out of that rut. Um, so just because you hear it in your head doesn't mean it's true. I've had to learn this uh, in the last eight and a half years that I have to constantly tell myself that hey, just because you think that and you've said it out loud in your own brain does not mean it's necessarily true. In fact, sometimes the opposite may be just as true. So it, uh, the, the limbic system wants to keep status quo and uh, it knows where you're sensitive. It's going to just dig and twist that knife and stuff and constantly take you back there. So we're going to talk about um, a few different areas here. The first area we're going to talk about is food. And uh, Cur Curly, are you still on the line with me? Yes, I am. Awesome. Okay. So Curly is a coach on our team, and she is so good at explaining this that I asked her to come on and talk about, uh, especially this time of year, we, we get really frantic in the hustle and bustle of holidays and stuff, and it's really easy for us to become even more limbic minded and oriented. So uh, Curly, take it away. Awesome, thanks Jared. So I'm actually gonna go over what's called food fallacies and they're, they're kind of lies that we tell ourselves to justify eating poorly. Um, and just a quick, a quick background for me is I used to be a dieter like uh, many people on this call where I would say, okay, like sugar was my big weakness. I am like total sweet tooth. And I would say, okay, no more sugar. Almost every day in my journal, I, I went back and I almost every day said, I need to lose 10 pounds. I need to lose 10 pounds. Oh my, I hate my stomach. And so I'd say no sugar. And then when I did that, of course, the next day I'd binge or even that night just overeat. And so I just saw this pattern and nothing was changing. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing something wrong. And so I really started to challenge my thoughts. 
And so I, I think one of my biggest memories was when I was like, I really wanted to lose weight in a healthy way and keep it off long term. And I went to a, um, a baby shower where they had um, sound keeps going in and out. It says, Jared. Can you hear me okay, Jared? Yeah, I, can, I can hear you okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, and the baby shower is there, and I saw lemon meringue, like homemade lemon meringue um, treats, and that's one of my favorite things. Almost everything is one of my favorite things, but I looked at it, and I saw, and I finally thought, because I, I, I heard myself saying, hey, this is once in a lifetime, you know, like this is a really rare opportunity. Why waste it? Like, eat it, and then I stepped back, you know, I separated myself, and I said, that's a lie, like, I, I live in America. I am five minutes, you know, I've in five minutes, I can have almost anything I want. And I've lived X amount of years and I've had access to them whenever I want. I can, I can just pass it by right now and I'll be fine. And I did. And I was so happy. And so I started thinking, okay, I am telling myself lies. And so here's um, six food fallacies that I will tell you that I would invite you to challenge yourself. And I'd love some interaction here. I'll ask two questions. Um, and you'll start recognizing when you have that experience that in your life. So number one, it's free, so I should eat it. How many of you have had that experience? And I would have loved to know what type of free foods you, that you have lately been offered, especially in the holidays. I'm sure you're having a lot of people um, shove free food in your face, and maybe your first reaction is, Okay, I should eat that. We're seeing. Okay, here's some. Oh, Costco food. That's I didn't even think about that. Samples at stores, cookies, bread, free fries with a salad. Oh, interesting. When you get a deal, you think you should definitely take advantage of the deal. Olive Garden, all you can eat buffet. I love all these. <laughs> it's free. I should eat it. Yep. Okay, so I would say, like, challenge yourself. That's not true. Just let yourself know. Hey, it's it's free. I don't need to eat it. <laughs> You're not wasting an opportunity. You're increasing your opportunity to have a healthier life. Okay, so watch out for that one. A lot of, I really learned that hardcore in college when there was free donuts all the time. <laughs> and it's just not worth it. So the next one is it's rare. I mentioned this earlier. It's rare, I should eat it. So I would love to hear from you guys. What was the last rare thing that happened to you where you believe that it might be a person in your life that made something or it might have been uh, like a, an event. So kind of look for you what you guys are saying. For me, it was that 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 baby shower. Here's some pumpkin pumpkin rolls. Someone saying Christmas in the glass. I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that is, Jared? <laughs> Hi on Thanksgiving. My son makes chocolate cake. My, it's going so fast. The special cookies you make. Dessert in an all-inclusive Aruba trip. Wow. <laughs> that is hard when it is like a rarity. Awesome. These are really great. Eating pizza pie in my home next to me. Okay, you guys are awesome. Someone's saying something about what their boss made. Okay, so rare opportunities. You don't have to eat it just because it's rare. And I might add, there are smart ways of having a little taste. Remember Dr. A's three bite roll. Like I'm happy just having a small bite and that satisfies me. And so if it's so rare, you know, the opportunity, then follow that rule. Okay, so the next one, you ready? This is a kicker. This is probably the biggest one and that most people struggle with is I can't waste food. So... I, I can't waste food. I should eat it. Okay. Um, I would love to hear where you guys, if you struggle with that, where you learned that and where that last came in. So oftentimes it happens on buffets. You can't waste the food. Um, born and raised with the concept. Um, but the, your parents probably taught it. Yep. Parents, my hubby growing up, finish your plate. You know, as kids, that's what we grew up on is don't, you can't leave a table. You don't finish. China. Who's heard kids in China are starving. <laughs> so I need to eat it. And then it guilt strips you that you're not like somehow providing like fixing global poverty and you eat it. You know, that's your contribution to the world. <laughs> so thank you for your compliments, you guys. I love this. So watch that. So this is what I told my friends. I was actually just barely at an all you can eat buffet. 
I love sugar. So I tried, I did the one bite rule for a bunch of sugar options. And yes, I had a ton of wasted food. And that was okay to me because guys, you can either waste the food in your in the trash can or you can waste it in your body. There is a point, food for us is nutrition. Like it nourishes our body, gives us energy, makes us feel good. There is a point where you cross that line where it's no longer nourishing it and you are wasting it. And so eating it instead of throwing in the trash is not going to save any kids in China. It's not going to solve global poverty, okay? You can waste it. You can waste it or W-A-I-S-T. Waste it. <laughs> so I, I figured when I, when I finally like understood that I was like well I might as well make the stomach the trash can bigger instead of my body bigger so watch out for that and I like when I have like one piece of sandwich left or one piece of whatever left and I can toss it I know I've like I fully understand this concept (laughs) is it's okay you'll be all right um okay so the next one is I paid for it so I should eat it I paid good money for that so I should eat it (laughs) So I'd love to hear comments about that, what your experiences and where that's happened. <laughs> Lori says, yes. <laughs> I'm sure this happens at fancy restaurants, at buffets, bite-sized candy. I ended up eating the whole thing, <laughs> mostly at buffets, Jackie saying. Awesome. Starbucks, things are going so fast. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this happens. And the thing is, remember you guys, you probably wouldn't pay a restaurant money saying, Hey, will you please make me overweight? Will you please make me feel awful? You know, we would never pay for that. So we don't think about that when we go in. So when you're thinking I paid good money for this, it's, you didn't pay good money to, to feel terrible. Like when you go to a restaurant or buffet, you think about the ambiance, the people you'll be talking with, the good flavors. And so enjoy that part, but you can always take it home. Um, set some of aside. Okay. So watch out for that. You don't have to eat something just because you paid good money for it. If you it's, I like to remember you're going to pay for it later. (laughs) If you like, you'll double pay for it later. If you eat it now, then you may pay for that later. So, okay. The fifth one out of the six is I don't want to miss out. So I am going to eat it. I'm going to be there with my friend. So who here has fear of missing out syndrome, FOMO? (laughs) So big time for me, it might be your friends going out to get ice cream. It might be your family get together. They have a really special pie night or whatever. Um, So watch out with this. Um, What what do you do when your friends are all saying, hey, I'm going out to ice cream? How do you feel okay with that you're not missing out by not eating the food? I can't read these as fast enough. Um, but the thing is, is I've learned like sometimes the hardest part when I'm trying to like avoid sugar, eat healthier, the hardest thing for me is the other people thinking I'm miserable <laughs> when I'm not like I can, I can, for me, it's easy to say, Hey, yeah, we can go get, we can go out for ice cream, but I'll just take my water and I'll be fine. <laughs> and it usually is more convincing of my friends or whatever that I'm totally happy Um, and so that's one is you're not missing out. Like what other people have, like what they experience is they're missing out. They can either miss out on feeling like junk, not having energy, or they can miss out and basically missing out on a healthy life and just like feeling so full. (laughs) So remember that, like, do you want to miss out on having a healthy, free, energetic life? Or do you want to, you know, enjoy feeling junky? (laughs) So these next two slides, I'm going to have you uh, finish the last one um, here in just a second. But these last, these next two slides are, think about uh, these questions that Curly's asking and how they have uh, applied to everything in your life. When, uh, when we apply these principles, not just to how we make decisions for, about food, but how we make decisions about uh, our relationships, about our exercise, about how we approach uh, our job or our business, things like that, we get really good really fast at these things because now you're not only practicing them around the times of day that it's time to make a decision about food, but you're making these decisions all the time and it's creating these habits a lot faster. So, um, so exercise is the same way. 
Um, and the next one is about uh, like starting a business. So you're going to have these times where you feel like you're missing out. You feel like you're, it's a rare occasion. You feel like it's, oh, I paid for it, right? So um, apply these to all these areas. Now give us the last one, Curtly. Sure, so the last one is I'm a foodie. I can't, like, how can I get healthy? I love, I love food too much, so I have to eat it. So that's really interesting to me because as I became healthier and healthier, I enjoyed food more. And as you know, with this program that you become a mindful eater, that you actually start to taste things. You actually start to feel how it affects your body. And so when, when you might say, oh, I'm a foodie, I like food too much, like I can't miss out on this. Then remember, hey, like when you start to eat healthier, you will enjoy food even more. And you don't have to eat, it's not the amount that you eat that usually people think they're foodies. It's just enjoying the flavor. And you can have like a bite or three bites or whatever and just let it sit in your palate. And one little random trick is when you breathe out, you taste the most. And so I will take a small bite of a dessert I just want to try and I'll let it sit in my palate and I'll breathe out and the flavor rushes through my body and I'll breathe out again. You know, so that's a neat thing about like you can keep your foodie hood as you eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So um, one thing that Curly just said is, um, well, and a couple people said this in the thread too. Well, this is who I am. Um, who you are isn't nearly as important as who you want to be. My, this is, my wife and I had a conversation during this four year gap between the time she really attacked her health and, and was contending for health. And when I really started contending for my health. And this conversation, I said, how have you done this? And what was the biggest change? And she said, I made the decision that I was no longer a foodie. I made the decision that I am healthy Amber, right? And I was going to make decisions based on what that health, what I wanted my health to look like. Now, she, uh, she said, it took my body time to catch up with who I made the decision to be, right? She had 35 pounds to lose. But um, it's also really important, don't, uh, uh, there, there's a significant difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is behavioral. Guilt is, oh man, I messed up, right? I went off my plan, my chosen plan, whatever that is. And you're like, I'm gonna do better. I'm going to set a plan. I'm going to talk to my coach. I'm going to uh, uh, plug into the community more. All these kinds of things. Shame is where you say, I'm a rotten person. I'm of no worth, right? Um, your worth, like think of yourself like a million dollar bill, right? Whether that million dollar bill gets dropped in the mud puddle or spent or whatever, it's still a million dollars. That's how human beings are. We are of infinite worth all the time, regardless of what you do or don't do. It's not going to change who you are and your value, but uh, don't fight against it. So one of the worst things we can do is repress things because anything that gets repressed eventually will come out. So if you're telling yourself, I'm a foodie, um, no, I'm not a foodie, right? It's okay. It doesn't make you a bad person to say, hey, I like food, I like sugar, stuff like that. It's just you're becoming aware of those things. So don't get frustrated. Be a peaceful warrior about these things. Become proactive rather than reactive. And last but not least, um, between stimulus and response, there is space. In order to really become uh, proactive and responsive in life rather than reactive, it requires us to put something of value in that space. To actually take the time and mindful meditation, find what works for you. Ask your coach for several different uh, things that might fit into your day. Uh, but listen to soothing music. Just take time to think. But always during that time, remind yourself of what it is that you want and what you're willing to fight for. And last but not least, just be determined. The people who get what they want in life and uh, reach their goals 
are the ones who relentlessly fight for them every single day. So uh, we thank you guys for being on the call with us. Um, and I would encourage you guys to stick around for the next half hour. Uh, Kat Fuller and a couple of other coaches are going to be uh, talking about um, filling that space with some more goodness, uh, helping other people, becoming more integrated into our community. Uh, but stick around. They've got a great presentation planned for you. And, uh, and let's go out and not only help ourselves continue to greater, uh, create greater health in our own lives, but do that by creating greater health in our families, our communities, and, uh, and in our societies. So thanks everybody for being on. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.